All right, for our next lightning talk, uh, you know, when we speak about the power of data and transparency, we often start thinking about the value that it provides to citizens. Uh, in our next talk, we're going to hear from the state of Connecticut's comptroller and how they're using data to improve their internal operations. Uh, so please welcome to the stage, Kevin Limbo. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for that. It's good to see you. Uh, I want to begin by thanking Kevin Merritt and the Socrata team for uh, making this opportunity available for me to be with you today uh, and talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in Connecticut. So uh, I'll start by saying when I walked in the door uh, for the first time as comptroller about five years ago, um, Connecticut was getting barely passing grades uh, from all of the open government watchdog groups uh, across the country. This is particularly a problem because Connecticut was home to early freedom of information laws under the first woman elected governor in her own right in the nation's history, Ella Grasso, in the late 70s. Uh, so we had fallen uh, pretty far in a relatively short period of time. Uh, the grade and the perception were troubling, uh, but beyond the public perception and the public utility that could come with greater transparency, we wondered what it really meant for those of us inside government. Uh, and so I quickly found out. Connecticut spends hundreds of millions of dollars on economic development incentives. Uh, we're trying to incentivize companies to come, incentivize companies to stay, begging people not to leave us, you know, all that thing. The thing that government does, not so successfully, uh, depending on who you are. And as Connecticut's freshly minted comptroller, uh, I asked the question, what's the return on investment for all of this money that we're pumping out into the economy? What jobs are we actually uh, creating, and are we retaining any of them? So as it turns out, even though I thought they were pretty reasonable questions, uh, the answer back was that I wasn't allowed to know. It seemed an odd answer. Uh, and if I, as comptroller, couldn't know, certainly the electorate of Connecticut couldn't know. Now, for full disclosure, don't let the jacket and tie sort of fool you. I refer to this as government drag and cut my adult teeth uh, as an AIDS activist and healthcare advocate. So hearing the word no uh, doesn't sit easy with me, and I need to know why. So I thought for sure that once I had pushed through the doors of government and got my hands on the data, then I'd be able to facilitate this new era of data-driven decision-making but not necessarily uh, the case, as I found out. While open government is something that uh, we often view as a public access matter, it became quickly clear that even those of us inside the walls of government were at a loss. Information was held tight inside agencies uh, that maintained it, and there were concerns raised by people both inside government and outside about the consequences of public knowledge uh, and about these public investments in particular. They were afraid that some elected officials might be punished uh, if the outcomes didn't match the promises that, were, that preceded them. And as elected officials, some thought that the public simply wouldn't understand. Bless their hearts, they just wouldn't understand this very complex information. So fast forward five years later, uh, those economic dollars now that I wondered about, uh, you can wonder about too. Uh, because those jobs, those that have been gained, those that have been lost, are intricately mapped uh, on a public portal. Something I pursued, passed through the legislature, uh, died on the Senate calendar, but ultimately was signed by executive order of our governor. It ignited a desire for us to move quickly, uh, to broadly pull back the curtain of state government and begin with our own house, and that was in the office of the comptroller. So here's where we are now. Using in-house resources initially, uh, we began trudging through a bog of state financial information, gathering up data, putting it online. Once we verified it was good, even if it was in a horrible PDF, we put it up there just to sort of keep the ball moving. Uh, and pretty soon, others realized that they could freely see the data and make some of their own judgments about what we were doing with their tax dollars. We began at the same time, and still do, uh, participation in civic hack nights, where we bring our data, uh, test the functionality, and get help building applications and uh, answering questions, frankly, that we haven't even thought of yet. Now, using the Socrata platform, uh, my office publishes virtually all of its financial data online at Open Connecticut. Open Connecticut's got two big parts. 
Open budget and open checkbook. Open checkbook is where people are most interested, but open budget's where the rest of us like to spend our time. Through the checkbook, uh, you can now search real-time information that's updated nightly about who received payments from the state of Connecticut for goods and services and how much they received. You can visualize your findings, obviously, with graphs and charts, and you can compare year-over-year -year trends by program or specific vendor sharing it all online through social media or just downloading the raw data set and taking it away. On open budget, users can now track actual state expenditures, updated monthly against budgeted amounts throughout the fiscal year. We can now follow every dollar spent through our accounts payable system. So now some have asked which branch of, branch of government prefers crystal rock water over Poland Spring? Well, you can find that out too. Who received money to plow the roads? And who received the most money to plow the roads? How has personal income revenue changed over the past four years? And in a state like Connecticut, how has gaming revenue trended during that same period? In Connecticut, whether you're a state commissioner in search of a public policy solution or a proverbial cranky uncle, researching from your home computer in anticipation of the next great dinner table debate, there's an answer now for you online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The public utility is clear. Our surrogates in academia and in the media and in the government watchdog agencies can better access what they need to hold us accountable and frankly help us formulate better solutions. But here's what's been most surprising, at least to me, its usefulness inside government. Last week, we hosted an open house for commissioners, legislators, legislative aides, government staff, and even some lobbyists. And we gave them an online tour of the environment to ensure that everybody understood the scope of open budget and open checkbook. Even during the demo, as we divided, dived into the data on our site, we stumbled on new policy questions. For example, why do some towns and districts have overwhelming participation rates with the veterans' property tax credit? Does it mean they just have more vets in their community? Are more veterans there informed about the program? Or are municipal leaders just not engaged? We also discovered that dozens of categories of state spending, uh, I'm sorry, in state permits and fees uh, really bring in incredibly low amounts of revenue. All we had to do was run the list flip it on its head, and you could see there were some categories where 500 bucks was coming in in any given fiscal year. It raised the question, what's the usefulness? Does the cost of enforcement and administration outweigh the benefit? And what goodwill does it raise just to take them off the books completely? Legislators, Republicans and Democrats, and their aides are now using the site as a tool to respond to constituent questions. Commissioners, anecdotally, have told me that they've learned something about their very own agency from the data, particularly when they compared themselves to similar agencies at another point in state government. It's created the realization that this is not only about public engagement, even though that's a key value, but about ensuring that government is designed and administered in a way that is sustainable over time, by making informed and responsible decisions based on data rather than reactionary and often false presumptions. It's about putting this, a stop to doing business as usual just because that's the way we've always done it. How many times have we heard that? If we in government are willing to put information out there, even if it doesn't always put us in the po best possible light, that's a great outcome. If we in government are willing to innovate, to try new ways to solve old problems, knowing that sometimes you fail, but also knowing that if you don't try, you get more of the same, then that's also a great outcome. We're reaching a point where we understand as adults that we might not always agree on everything all of the time, but now we can identify a problem and we can use data to drive a solution. I thank you for your attention and I wish you all the best. Have a great summit.